NCAA Division I Selection Special coming up Sunday night on ESPN2. We'll learn the field of 64, including the Southland Conference automatic qualifier, the winner of this championship, where they will go in the regional round. 9 o'clock Central, live on ESPN2, also streaming on Watch ESPN. All roads lead to Oklahoma City and USA Softball Hall of Fame Stadium. New pitcher for the Nichols Colonels, it's Megan Landry, and we saw a great performance out of her against Central Arkansas, what was now yesterday evening as we play here on Saturday morning. We'll really see a contrast from Johnson to Landry, just in the difference of speed and the ability to move the ball around. Landry owns the zone. She has the ability to differentiate these pitches inside, outside, up and down. And she has an excellent change up that she will use at any point in the at bat. She's very confident. The change up has a nice looping drop to it, almost like a drop change but she's gonna be a huge contrast to the power pitching of Jackie Johnson, hopefully to throw off these hitters and we're back right where we started last time McNeese was up to bat. Erica Piancastelli leading it off. Landry went the full seven against Central Arkansas in the back draw semifinal, allowing four hits, two runs, both of them earned. Striking out five Bears and keeping the host school out of the championship round. And this is fun with all the cowgirl and colonel fans making noise, but a late night past midnight game for the host school. There would have been some even bigger energy in this place as word got out around Conway, Arkansas to get here to Ferris Field. Absolutely. I mean, just from people that I know who were in the area when they when they saw that this game was being played here and, you know, just some big softball fans around the area, I got messages like, oh, I might have to check that out. Now, of course, like we mentioned, it's past a lot of people's bedtimes, but that's why we're here bringing you guys the action on ESPN3. Bianca Costelli adds to her record-setting walk numbers. That is walk number 61 on the season. That is triple the second most on this team. That's just an insane number. I mean, like we mentioned before. And she's going to second, trying to turn it into a double. She slides past the bag, though. Ooh, just back in time. And her heart was racing on that, thinking she may have been the fifth victim today to slip past second on this slick turf. And you saw her kind of take a sigh of relief and, and laugh it off to nickel shortstop, but she barely made it back. That pesky second base, Chris, this turf field, it's gonna sneak up on even the best of them. Her first steal last inning, she did what was probably the smarter move sliding head first, able to grasp the bag. A lot more danger of sliding past when you go feet first. Yeah, you're exactly right. Sometimes in situations like this, when you do slide with your feet first, you don't really have the ability to kind of stop yourself. Sliding feet first, usually what you want to do towards home plate, because you have the ability to kind of hook around and just graze the plate with your arm and go past it. But Head first, especially on this turf, is probably the way to go so you can brace yourself with your weight onto the ground. 0 2 pitch coming to Morgan Catron. 0 for 2 on the day. Two, hits her. That's the first hit by pitch I've seen so far in this tournament. 
very uncharacteristic of Landry, who has the ability to kind of place the ball exactly where she wants it, wondering if that's attesting to the moisture out here tonight, the cold air. But sometimes balls just kind of get away from you a little bit. Pitches kind of sail. And that's not the situation that Nichols wants to be in right now with two McNeese Cowgirls on first and second. And it's Marissa Taunton taking the place of Katrin as the pinch runner. And now Haley Drew will step in and try to bring both Pia Costelli and Taunton around. Five nothing score in favor of the Cowgirls. Really interested to see what's gonna happen here at the plate with no outs, two runners on. Let's see if maybe we'll see a little small ball action here from Haley Drew. Something we've really yet to see in this game. Been a lot of power hits, been a lot of couple balls over the fence, but haven't really seen that much small ball here quite yet. I'm a big fan of that small ball as somebody who was terribly slow runner and a pitcher. I was always fascinated by the small ball and the speed of softball. And we're going over our open ballots as they are due to the Southland Conference to make up the all-tournament team and the MVP. My MVP vote going to Tori Anator. She had a two RBI single in game one of this tournament, helping McNeese run rule Sam Houston and then adding a two run homer here in the championship as Bent's laid down by Drew. Perfectly done. Everybody safe. Bases full of Cowgirls. And my nominee for MVP due up with the bases loaded. And if she can deliver here, I think my vote very much justified. Mm -hmm. There's been several times here in this game where you and I have kind of spoken into existence here. Maybe that'll happen. We saw Bunt, the small ball that I mentioned with nobody on and two very quick runners on the base pass. Why not use the speed and the bunting ability that you have in, in that situation, especially on this turf with someone as quick as these batters are? You have to make a perfect play on the ball, perfect throw, perfect catch and the odds are in the offensive favor on that. Some incredible English on that softball, too, as she laid that bunt down. The curvature was really impressive. Kept Nichols from being able to make a play. 0-1 pitch, swung on and missed. A big rip from Yanator, looking to take another ball out of this park. O2 oh, count. Pitch from Landry. That one's ripped again to deep left center. It won't get out of the park off the top of the fence, but at least a couple of Cowgirls will score. Seven to nothing, McNeese. Inches away from a grand slam. That was absolutely beautiful. They have a little bit of tall fence back there here at Ferris Field, but that does the job. Going to score two runs here and stopped the runner at second base a little bit. When the ball hit the fence, it had some, some bounce back, and it kind of held that runner up at second, not able to get to third, but that will score two. One of the longest singles in Tori Anator's career, <laughs> no doubt. She's stuck at first base, but all she cares about is that she brought two of her teammates home Increase the lead to seven to nothing. Yeah, I think it's safe to say both of our our votes for Tori as MVP are very justified. And no, we did not copy off of each other's tests up here. Tori had an, an impressive game so far and just done extremely well in this entire tournament. Schmidt trying to lay down the bunt unsuccessful. Doubled and scored in the fourth inning. Go, 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 
We saw a little bit more small ball here. Pretty much the same scenario as earlier with the bunt. Runner at first, runner at second, nobody out. Let's see if they'll use that speed here. A one pitch. Foul. I am impressed by Landry in the circle. She's still coming right at these hitters, mixing up her pitches. Very calm demeanor out there on the mound. The shortstop, Gentiloni, the second, unable to get the runner. So not able to double off the Cowgirls there. But Schmidt is retired. Nice First out up. of the inning. Nice heads up play there by Gentiloni. And some nice heads up base running as well by McNeese. Sometimes that's where you get in a little bit of a trouble when there's a hard hit ball to the middle infielders. Kind of get stuck out there in no man's land and get thrown back out, but nice heads up plays on both, both sides. 7-0 lead for McNeese. Under normal circumstances, the Cowgirls would end this ball game with one more run, but there is no mercy rule in the championship game in the Southland Conference. We will play the full seven. And hopefully, McNeese is well aware of this. I'll take you back five, six years ago when a Southland Conference baseball team was not aware the mercy rule was not in place in the championship game. I would have loved to have been a fly on the wall of that dugout. It was Texas Arlington against Southeastern Louisiana. <laughs> Championship game being held in San Marcos, Texas. A UTA grand slam put them above 10 runs after mm -hmm. seven innings, which would have been the mercy rule in baseball. Because this one's popped up in foul territory. The UTA team not aware that of that difference, that there is no mercy rule in the championship, and they dogpiled at home plate, thinking they had won the game and it was over. They were the champs. The umpires had to pull them off and tell them, guys, we're playing the full nine. This isn't over yet. And it made the Sports Center not top 10 <laughs> the next week. I, in fact, I believe it was number one on that list. And it was my debut on Sports Center calling that game the Sports Center anchors describe the situation, kind of set the scene, mm -hmm. and then let me describe the rest of it. As UTA players were dogpiling, all the while we knew in the booth they were going to have to keep playing. <laughs> of course, they ended up holding on for the big victory and did win the Southland Conference Baseball Championship that year. Their final Southland Conference Baseball Tournament before UTA exited for the Western Athletic Conference and a year later left the WAC for the Sun Belt. Definitely a moment you'll never forget, but I can guarantee you that's a moment they will never forget. and They will always remember that rule no matter where they're at. Strickland swings and misses. First strikeout recorded by Landry in relief tonight. Big out right there by Landry again, showing her off-speed ability right there. Now I think the only people who weren't laughing about that situation were those involved on the southeastern Louisiana side, right. seeing seeing two dog piles against mm -hmm. them in that championship. The false one and then the real one after the game was really over. Hashtag awkward. <laughs> That was so long ago, I don't think there were hashtags <laughs> back then. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie, I was never a big fan of the dog piles. 
I've heard way too many horror stories of people actually getting injured. In the, the left center, the Frederick can't get to it, and two more Cowgirls should score. Well, Landrino will hold Yanator at third, and now, and now she'll come home. Some confusion there. Did they think there, it was McNeese over? There, McNeese thought the game was over. <laughs> it happened again. McNeese thought the game was over, and Landrino didn't send the runner home, and there is no mercy rule in the championship game. Oh, no. And here we go again. Hashtag awkward. Here we go again. It's not over. We're going to get the full explanation to both teams. I can't wait to see. We're going to get a full explanation because if a change was made, we're certainly not aware of it. But it is in the conference rules that there is no mercy rule in the championship round. We'll have a discussion between James Landrino, Angel Santiago, Southland Conference officials, and the umpires. But it's very clear in the manual, I believe. And it was just verified for us by tournament director Steve East minutes ago that it's written out in the manual that there is no mercy rule. I can tell you what the votes of either coach is going to be if I had to guess. But you can kind of see it on. Well, assuming we're right. Yeah. Drew and Yanator score there. Yanator hesitated because she thought the game ended mm -hmm. when Drew crossed the plate. You can just feel the tension right now. <laughs> I mean, it, you could cut it with a knife. Just the looks on everyone's faces. You can't make this stuff up. No. Nine nothing should be the score in favor of McNeese. And I will eat my words if they decide this one's over. But again, we got clarification from the tournament director, Steve East, just before this occurred that there would be no mercy rule in this game. But again, it's something that the players and coaches have in place all year long. This is the only time that's not the case. Hence the confusion. It's strange to change a rule for only one game a year. Right, right, and you can you can see the advantage of it on both sides. You know, you, you look at, at Nichols, and then you look at McNeese. Of course, teams that are cruising into this game, having already run-rolled someone twice. And it, we're on the cell phone oh now. Oh, man. Yeah, a team that's coming in with a lot of momentum, of course, is going to be in favor of having a mercy rule in place. And then on the other hand, you know, you, you want to give your team a chance to, to come back because we've seen it many, many times throughout softball that no matter how big of a deficit, teams can come back. Our home plate umpire, Shelly Mangrum, on the phone. I'm not sure with who. Southland Conference Associate Commissioner Jenny McGee, we see her on the phone as well, trying to get clarification. Again, we looked at the manual just before this half inning, double checking what we thought the rule was, that mm -hmm. the eight runs after five did not take effect here in the championship game. So Cowgirls should be leading this one nine to nothing in the bottom of the fifth inning. If it's overruled and they say the run rule is in place, then it would end at 8-0. And we're waiting just like you. I wish we had a feed into that cell phone conversation. Oh, man. We don't have the technology for that. We need to get a bug down there. Our but. crew is working on it right now, <laughs> tapping phones. We have the technology. Let's intercept that call. And we're getting to the point of 
where these both of these teams have kind of been standing around long enough to where if you are going to continue play, some pitchers need to start tossing a little bit more, need to start warming up those legs. Because like we said, the weather out here, it's uncharacteristically chilly for a night in May in Arkansas. It's been a little bit wet. So the longer they stand out there, the colder they're going to get. And that might have an effect on, on their performance if we do continue play. Nine to nothing, Cowgirls over the Colonels. Bottom of the fifth inning, it's 12.52 a.m. Central Time. I haven't been up this late in <laughs> very, very long, minus, well, on my own accord, I'll yeah, tell you that say, much. You, you when, have when a small I, child. I've been, <laughs> I've been woken up at this time of night plenty of times, but I was asleep long before this <laughs> i just got interrupted by young austin mykoski austin you better be sleeping hopefully he's not up watching this right now it's way past his bedtime for sure it's past my bedtime you could just see the difference in expression and demeanor it really tells the tale of, of these two teams in just this moment. McNeese just triumphant, ready to call it a day, get that trophy, get that title again for the second year. And then Nichols, who is just dumbfounded and really just wants a few more chances to, to get back into this game. And we still don't have an answer. We're all anxiously waiting with bated breath to see what the call is going to be. We're running out of things to say. <laughs> I, I hate to tell you, yeah. but it's 12.53. I've been at the ballpark since about 7.45 this morning, minus a short break to get some lunch and go to the gorgeous Human Performance Rec Center here on the UCA campus. I was thankful to get the guest pass and take some of my time and make it worthwhile, although I've eaten so much junk food here at the stadium <laughs> in the past three days. I'm not sure what good that workout did. Well, my day slightly different than yours. I did, I will say I give myself some brownie points. I did get up early this morning and work out, but I took a fantastic nap. <laughs> Lucky you. <laughs> Can I take one right now while we wait for this decision? I, I had a nice lunch by myself. And Tap me on the shoulder and wake me up when they <laughs> figure out what's going on. And there's the final hit of the game if they decide that the mercy rule is in place as Shomo hit this one to deep left center. And you could almost see center fielder for Nichols. She kind of even hesitated after that ball hit the fence. It's almost like she had given up or she kind of accepted that exactly. they were eight run rules she everyone didn't get thought the ball it was over. in time everyone on the field thought it was over it was only those behind the scenes who had discussed the rules prior and it appears we've got a decision James Landrino's face and reaction will tell us let's see coach Landrino and what he tells us ball game over wow. The McNeese Cowgirls, eight nothing winners. As Drew crossing the plate officially ended this one. And this one is complete. The McNeese Cowgirls, back to back champions in the Southland Conference regular season and tournament. First time in 20 years mm -hmm. that's happened. I wonder also when is the last time a team has won with three run rule, three run rule games. That's got to be a nice statistic. That's probably something we don't we don't see very often. They came in, defeated Nichols twice and Sam Houston by the run rule. I wonder the last time that's been done. Trophy presentation next on ESPN three.